Hey everyone. Okay, so I'm going to do a video on Tiny11 on a Surface Pro 1. I got a disclaimer first of all, as you guys all know that downloading software from the internet can be dangerous, can open you up to malware. So with this tutorial, it's uh, at your own risk and it's for educational purposes only. The things that we're going to need to get this installed, first of all, we're going to need the ISO. Check the description for that. I've got it down below. Uh, we're going to need a 4 gig or larger USB thumb drive. The software to write the ISO to the thumb drive, uh, you use Ventoy, but Rufus is another one I've used in the past. Um, you could also probably even use the uh, Raspberry Pi imager for this. We're going to need the uh, Surface Pro tablet, if you actually have one and you're following along, uh, or any PC really that has an AMD or Intel CPU. Uh, you want at least 2 gigs of RAM for this and a hard drive or SSD large enough for the OS itself, which uh, can take about eight gigs. And then of course your files and games that you wanna try on it. So uh, the other thing is and with this, Tiny11 will not automatically have the Wi-Fi adapter installed by default. So you're gonna need a USB ethernet or Wi-Fi adapter that will install from Windows base. Uh, so you don't need the internet to get the driver for it. And then um, once you have that, and you're finished the install, the uh, Windows updates will install the driver for the built-in Wi-Fi adapter. And lastly, with those updates, you're gonna need some patience because they do take some time. To start our install on our Surface Pro, we wanna make sure it's turned off. We wanna make sure we have our thumb drive that we created earlier in, and to boot from that, on the Surface Pro 1 and 2, you press the volume key down and then the power button. Hold that, that volume key down and then press the power until the Surface comes up and then let go of both. And that will boot from the USB drive. Here we have my Ventoy installation with all my ISOs on it. I'll just go down till I find Tiny11, boot in normal mode and just wait for it to get to the start of the install. Okay, here we go. Setup is starting. Okay, that's all washed out for my camera, so I'm just going to zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. Ah, come on, there we go. Uh, okay, a little shaky here. Let's click next. Let's see if I can get that to be a little less shaky. We're gonna accept that, click next. And now we would go through, we could actually just delete all these partitions and then click new partition or just click next because it'll actually create all the partitions it needs to. So I'll do that and I'll come back as soon as it's installed. Okay, we are finished doing the install of the files. And as you can see, we're getting ready to reboot. <clears throat> and going for first boot up after all the files have been copied and put into place. And these little surfaces actually run pretty good, even though it's an M SATA. SSD, it's still an SSD, so it runs runs nicely. And this will be great too for this old Surface Pro 1 because it has the stock 128 gig light on SSD in it, which if anybody has installed Windows 8, Windows 10 onto the Surface devices with that small of a drive, you don't get a lot of space left over for your programs, etc. So only having a base install of eight gigabytes sure will help out. The nice thing for the Surface Pro 2 is when I actually repaired the screen on that several years ago, I uh, bought a 512 gig Samsung. I forget which model it was, but it was uh, like an Evo M SATA. So I don't have to worry about space constraints on that one. But getting into these Surface Pro devices is a chore because of the adhesive that they use around the edges. It's it's 
kind of like the stuff they use on windshields for vehicles. It's thick, black, sticky, and extremely hard to get to get off or to get loose enough. Uh, you can use alcohol and whatnot, uh, but it takes a lot of very careful prying to get the screen off without breaking it. The original screens on these two things were both broken, so um, I didn't have to worry too much about breaking them more. You want to try and go as, as carefully as you can if you are going to go down that route. So that wasn't too long of a install process. It goes pretty quick, especially when there isn't as much to install. So I live in the United States, even though I'm from Canada. US keyboard is fine. Okay, so right off the bat, we don't have internet on this thing. So I have this lovely little thing here. Now it's USB-C. If you know your Surface Pros, you know there is no USB-C. But I do have a little adapter here that I've got plugged in. So we'll see, and it has USB-C on it, but it might only be for power delivery. So we'll see what happens. Looks like I'll have to just say no internet. I'll try it again one more time and see what happens. No, okay. So I'll have to wait until after it boots back up again. So continue with limited setup is what we do. Okay, so this, as they say, might take a few minutes. I believe it did. So I'm going to stop the recording for a moment and then I'll start the recording again once it's finished. Okay, we're back. It didn't take too long, actually. It was only a few minutes. Actually, we'll go to Windows Update. Everything I needed to run this came straight from Windows Update. I technically didn't have to do anything else, but afterwards I decided to run Snappy Driver Installer, which is, if, if you haven't heard of that one, um, there's a bunch of programs out there that will do driver updates. I forget some of the names of the companies that make them, but the free one out there is Snappy Driver Installer. And uh, you can update systems even all the way back to, I think, Windows XP. I don't know if it goes further back than that. If we want to do our drivers at the same time, we can go down here to Advanced Options and then to Optional Updates. And that will allow us to, to do any Windows updates or driver. Well, here's the Windows updates and then driver updates. And it should take us back to the main Windows Update screen. So once all that stuff's done, then um, I'll just fast forward it to the next section. And Windows Update. And we've got one here. I guess that must be the only thing left. Yeah, I had this happen last time with several different downloads that came up. It wouldn't do it. I would just sit there and do it over and over again. And then it would just say retry. And then on the Surface Pro 2, it would do this and then it would just go no updates. So not certain why it did that, but. Oh, three more updates. Okay, I'll come back after this set of updates is finished and the computer rebooted. Okay, back on the desktop now. We did a quick reboot after the last updates. I didn't have to, but I just figured might as well do it anyway. So uh, we'll go back to, oh, not Task Manager. I'll leave that open though. Um, we'll go to Settings and then to Windows Update again. And check for updates and see what happens. I think this should be the end of it. Yeah, okay, so there's nothing left now.
So that's got everything. And go through. There's nothing left over before there was a lot of stuff left over before we started doing the updates. But everything is now actually taken care of. It all has a driver to it. Everything works. Uh, touch screen. Boom. Everything is working just fine. Of course, these um, updates are a little on the old side. Like when you think about the driver from 2015 for the HD graphics, uh, standard a, uh, HCI controller, whereas the one on the Surface Pro 2 actually downloaded uh, an Intel 8 series chipset driver. <clears throat> This one's obviously the built-in one from 2006. So let's see what else I can see here really quick. Uh, sound driver. Uh, the audio driver should be, I believe it's a real tech, but of course it's got the 2013 driver that's built into Microsoft or into Windows itself. So I'll quickly go over to the task manager and go over to performance. And you can see here 1.6. Oh, let me get it going here. Oh, there. Now you can see 1600 megahertz DDR. Three, I believe it's in this. Um, but yeah, 1.6 gigabytes of memory is being used right now out of the four. Of course, there's nothing much running on it. I mean, it's just a base install. But um, SSD is barely moving. Okay, so after the first update, it actually installed the driver for the wireless adapter. And see, we're working. We're up and running. Uh, of course, I don't have a browser on here because Tiny11, they took out uh, the Microsoft Edge browser. Yeah, yeah, it's not here. So what you're going to have to do is get yourself a thumb drive on another computer, download the browser or browsers that you want. Pop it onto that drive, load her up, and install. And the other thing I'm gonna do here is I've got another thumb drive with the snappy driver installer. And I'm going to load that up and just quickly show you guys what it looks like if you haven't seen it already. So now it's snappy. Right off the bat, it's going to start doing a scan of what we have in our system. And it's going to give us all the drivers that we need. Sometimes there's stuff that doesn't seem to go through, but we're going to see how this works. I'm not really, I don't care about the restart points at this point because actually I'm going to try another light version of Windows 11 next, so I'll give that a shot after. Um, I'm going to leave the Wacom device for now because the screen is working just fine with the built-in Microsoft driver, but I did these surface accessory cover audio the, and the cameras and then the um, the chipset uh, drivers for the surface 2 and that all went through oh yeah and with the snappy driver installer there's two different versions if you're not familiar with it uh, there's one where you can download all the drivers and it's close to 30 gigs 
and then there's a light version which it will actually just download the drivers over the uh, internet as you know as the ones that you choose it'll download those and it doesn't go slow it's actually as long as your internet's you know speedy enough it actually does go fairly quick as you can see okay so those are all done so I'm just gonna go ahead and not click on that oops not that click on this those are the only two I'm not gonna do right this moment I may not even bother with them but I'll go ahead and do a reboot and the strange thing is, is after it comes up this the bottom bar seems to be rather large not exactly certain why but but uh, I'll go into settings and before with tiny 11 there wasn't a lot you could do with the personalization but I guess that must have downloaded a bunch of themes so I can you know change the theme get the darker uh, darker wallpaper so yeah so there we go it works really nice I'm actually pretty impressed with uh, how smooth it runs um, there is like I said another light version of Windows 11 that I'm going to test and uh, stay tuned for that one and uh, hopefully in the near future. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, a like would be appreciated and then uh, a subscription too would be great. Don't have to if you don't want to, but it'd be cool. Anyway, you will see me in the next one. I will not see you, but you will see me.